I am in rural Nottinghamshire. It is idyllic. It's that kind of oldie woldy calm village vibe. I am going to go meet a guy called Reese and his family. So he owns two lions and a puma and various other animals in Nottinghamshire. Like they're in his, in his back garden. I am actually quite surprised that we've arrived at this point because we have been back and forth with Reese for months. I think he's got concerns because it's so emotive and it's so controversial, you know, keeping wild animals in cages. There are nearly 4,000 exotic animals being kept as pets across the UK. After the Netflix smash hit Tiger King aired during lockdown in 2020, the number of people applying for dangerous wild animal licenses soared. This all feels quite timely, right? Because we were all completely taken with Tiger King, myself included, because Joe Exotic is such a maniac and so charismatic, like you couldn't, you couldn't take your eyes off him. Since Reese brought the lions to the family home two years ago, he's been appearing regularly in the tabloids. So this is from one of the local papers and the headline is, Residents fear for safety after council allows two lions and a puma <laughs> to be kept in the village. Reese Oliver, that's our guy, is an international show jumper, keeps the animals in enclosures at his home. Many residents have been expressing their concerns over safety. At some point, you have to take into account the element of human error, which can often happen. So basically, a loads of the neighbors are up in arms. I definitely want to ask him about that. Instinctively, I don't feel like a beautiful, wild, majestic animal belongs in a cage in a garden in Nottinghamshire. That's not where lions should be. I might feel totally different on Monday, you never know. One mile down from the picturesque village of Strelly, Reese lives with his girlfriend at his parents' family home. Okay, house is massive. <laughs> this house is enormous. Hello, baby. That's Harriet. Harriet. Oh, thank you ever so much. How are you? You good? Yeah, it's beautiful, this um, Yeah, the village, village is really pretty, yeah. isn't it? But it's not where you expected all these animals to be. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I cannot believe that I'm going to meet two lions and a puma. Yeah. And what other animals have we got? Not squirrel monkeys. Wallabies. Capybara. What is a capybara? The biggest rodent in the world. It's in this house? Yeah. It's in here now, yeah. It's fine, isn't it? And horses. horses. And horses. Because <laughs> you ride the horses, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. And, the, uh, and two dogs. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we're animal We've dogs. We've got a few. Uh, yeah. And um, your name is? Annie. Annie, nice to meet you. You're Reese's partner. Yes. How long have you been together? Uh, just over six years. Oh, OK. Yeah, long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talk me through the plans for the weekend. You'll just have to go along with the chaos of every weekend's chaotic anyways. Do you want me to show you around the house yeah, then? Yeah, that'd be amazing. That's where Capybara is at the minute. You all right, Cappy? It's like, um, like a hairy pig. <laughs> this is dining room. Wow. As you could tell, we're horsey. And this is where the guys watch telly. Karen, this house is nuts. <laughs> How long have you been here? 25 years. Wow. It was a shed. You built it all? Yeah. That front room that you went in, that was the whole house. Wow. It's 
I don't need to take my shoes off, no, you sure? Yeah. Right. Thank we, you. We've done, he tells me he does be done. <laughs> so this will be your room. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. I'm Thank sweet. you so much. Yeah. The family boasts of their wealth being substantially self-made. Dad Gary has a heat and engineering business, and alongside a successful career as a show jumper, Reese now runs an equestrian business with his mum, Karen. Are we allowed to see the lions? Yeah. Okay, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to expect. Just down from the house, next to the busy M1, are the family stables. So where where do you keep the lions? Hey, look. Oh my god, I can sit Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> They've spotted you. <laughs> Guys, I think they'd be so close. How, how close are we allowed to go? Oh you can yeah, you can go closer than this. Hello. That's a friendly hello. There she is. So this is the lioness. What's her name? Rora. 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 And he's called Rocky. He is gigantic, Reese. Do you know, I don't think I've ever been this close. No, that's what a lot of people say. So these are very much your pets? Yeah, they're kind of mine, you know what I mean? They love me. Do you think they love you? Oh, they, yeah, they do, yeah. He, he, he is literally obsessed with me. So this is their base, right? Where yeah, is their is outside we'll space? We'll go out here. Out you come. Thank you. Oh my God, look. They're just magnificent. Like, they're so stunning, aren't they? Oh, so this is the puma? This is him. He, he's a little bit funny with loads of people. Oh, OK, OK. He, he loves me, and it's, that's it. <gasps> hey. You can hear him purring, actually. You can come closer. Hello, mate. What's he called? He's called Rogue. Rogue? He was a rescue because I think somebody kept him as a pet in the house, and then they, when they realised that he was probably ripping all the sofas and stuff. Obviously. Obviously, then they just dumped him at this rescue centre. He was the first one I had and... Uh, so the puma came first? Yeah. And I basically bottle fed him till he was about a year old. A puma's capable of killing uh, humans? I think any, any wildcat is, is capable of killing humans. You good boy, huh? Reese, you're completely insane putting your fingers in his mouth. <laughs> I promise you, I will not be putting my fingers anywhere near that bloody fence. No. The whole setup is utterly bonkers. And it's evident that, you know, Reese feels he has a real sort of a loving connection with both the lions and the puma. And you can understand why people fall in love with them, but this all feels very strange to me. It's kind of nuts because you can't stop staring at them because they're so magical. But you also think, fuck it, if you weren't in a cage, I would be dead. Stacey, do you fancy giving me a hand? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you need? If you could chop up the garlic bread for us, that would be fab. I Thank can do you. That. I'm just chopping it in half. Yes, no asshole. Okay. I heard you're a really good chef. I'm an excellent chef, Annie, yeah. I'm staying over with Reese Oliver and his family. Should we sit down, Annie? Yeah. His dad, Gary, and brother Todd are home for the evening. Reese acquired his cubs at five weeks old, and they have now grown into two year old adult lions. I'm curious to find out more about the impact of bringing such dangerous animals into a small village. How did it all play out, Reese? How did you get to learn about the two lions? It was the same guy with the puma. He told me that there was an organisation in uh, Eastern Europe. I think it got shut down for animal cruelty. So they came and said, there's a bunch of lions needed rescue. And otherwise, basically, they're all getting euthanised. 
You didn't buy them? No, I didn't buy them, no. I basically drove over to check and picked them up. And what, you put them in the back of the van like, and come yeah, back? Yeah, I've got a, like a quarantine approved safety vehicle and then drove them back from Eastern Europe. It was like 18 hours drive or something. Alone? Yeah, and I literally had to stop every two hours because they needed feed in every two hours. I just can't imagine. Annie, when your man says, right, I'm going to go and um, take on a puma, and then shortly after, actually, there's a couple of lions on their way. My parents were like, run. <laughs> really? <laughs> At first, they were like, it's such a big commitment, but you've already got a commitment having 18 horses and dogs and everything else we've got. What are two lions and a puma? I mean... And Gary, what did you think? What I thought is I must have dropped him on his head when, I was, when he was a child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get involved with them. How much interaction do you have, Todd? Uh, none at all. Oh, really? Yeah. You're not fussed? No, I'm not fussed. I've got two goldfish upstairs. They're my only priority. <laughs> <laughs> that feels a lot more relatable. Did you underestimate the interest there would be surrounding you and your animals? Because when the puma arrived, I imagine the whole village were totally out of sort. What yeah. the well, heck on they, earth is going on? They didn't know until, they, until the lines arrived. We kept it quiet for as long as we could. Like. I imagine that went down like a lead balloon. Oh, right? yeah, 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 it did, yeah. Every three months, they have a village meeting. Yeah, yeah, and there's like, there's many people that's around this table now at it. And then when the news got out, there was 80, or oh, I think it was about 80 villages, wasn't there? It was like question time. I had to stand at the, basically the front and they all fired questions at me. What were the villagers saying to you at that uh, first meeting? Was I doing it for my ego? Okay. Which, I think for what it's cost to spend to keep them, I could have been driving around in Ferrari or going on fancy business. Fancy holidays. Yeah, fancy yeah. holidays. And did you have any reservations? Did you think, God, I'm taking a lot on here and some people are going to be really on side and some people are going to hate what I'm about to do? I mean... What people think and don't think is kind of like irrelevant, really, because it's what I want to do, do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, obviously, you have this sort of stereotypical idea of the kinds of individuals who want to own a lion or a tiger. Right, Al Pacino in Scarface, he's got the tiger, and Mike Tyson, you know. Is it, is it a status thing? I don't know, is it? I have ownership over these wild, kind of dangerous creatures. I think to them, it's really not a massive saga that they've got these two lions and a puma. To everyone else, obviously, we're like, this isn't usual. And there are loads of things we need to take into consideration. And is it safe? And is it fair? And are the animals looked after? And the list goes on and on. Happy. I think they just are obsessed with animals and don't really understand why other people think it's a bit mental. It's Saturday morning. Good? Well. Yeah, oh my god, I slept so well. Are you ready for today? Yeah, no, I'm really up for it. With a long list of animals to feed. Do I just give it whole? Yeah, baby. I'm trying my hardest to help out. Thank you. <laughs> this is Lauren, that's Ralph over there. Uh -huh. Are they vicious? No, 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 no. If you, if you just take that, just hold it out. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> I can only imagine how ridiculous I look. Face? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You chop, yep. and I'll get the bowls. All right. So if they bite you, don't scream, because they will all bite you. I'm not scared of these little monkeys, Reese. <laughs> right, yeah, just oh, stand wow. here. Oh, no. Hi. Hello. What's your fancy? Oh, go 
gosh. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 Oh, fucking hell. Please get me a watch. It's all right. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm checking if you've got fleas. <laughs> Over there, babe. No. Sorry. That's okay. Stacey, have you made a mess? Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Reach like <laughs> Do you know, I, I, I just didn't realise they would be so bold and so curious. Monkey. Oh, God. Have I got a monkey footprint on my head, Karen? Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely tremendous. After spending the morning with Reese's eclectic assortment of exotic animals. This is really lovely. Thanks, Harry. I'm interested to know how he got started. What is it about a certain type of person that owning a cat or a dog isn't enough? Karen, what was your Reese like when he was a boy? Well, I did get called up on plenty of occasions. <laughs> was Reese your naughtiest kid? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is the naughtiest, but he gets away with everything. He's the favourite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you not. said it, because <laughs> everyone else thinks it. He's not. <laughs> he is. Even yeah. he knows it. And then what happened when he left school? I was riding for a, for, for a chap in the middle of Germany, and he had lots of different cats, and I helped him look after the cats, and I did my licence out there. So is that where the love affair started, between you and Wild Cats? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then I got into some contacts with the in, in Czech and a few other places, and then it, it just evolves from there. Like, I know that you, you can own a lion or a tiger. When you try and look for those people who've got them, the, you cannot find them. It's like they don't exist. There's Facebook groups you don't even know about. Could I own a lion? Uh, what would I have to do? You'd have to apply for a dangerous wild animal licence. You have to prove you are competent, you've got experience, show that you can keep the public safe, public safety and animal welfare, and effectively, yeah, you could have one with an enclosure. Right. So, yeah, it's possible. I'm a bit taken aback by how easy it seems to get a license for these animals. But I want a closer look at what caring for them actually involves. Reese, what is that dragging on the floor? That, the insides of a calf. A so you've kept all the organs? Yeah, because it's good for them because they get all the nutrients and stuff from it. What is that alarm, Reese? Um, that is an alarm that when the door's open, if it's open for more than 10 seconds, the alarm goes off. Where do you get these carcasses from? Uh, an abattoir, you know, when old horses die and they get shot, or carts, pigs, anything like that, and then we can reuse the meat. And do you have to buy them? Um, yeah, we do have to buy A lot of the time we have to buy them because he brings them here, so we have to pay him for his time and things like that, so yeah. I imagine it's quite expensive feeding two lions and a puma. How much do you reckon you're spending on feed per month? Probably around about nearly a £1,000 a month something like that, for everything. Bloody hell. He is gigantic. I mean, he is big, isn't he? You know, he's two, he's only two. Are lions in captivity ever able to live a fulfilled life? How do you mean fulfilled life? Healthy, happy, stimulated. Yeah, because we do what's called enrichment, so we don't just like chuck the food on the floor like we hang it up or we hide it in boxes. They do something different every single day, twice a day. Some people will feel utterly heartbroken at the fact that these lions are in this cage by the M1. Yeah, I understand where they're coming from. It's not the ideal location for, for any wild animal. Although they belong in the wild, unfortunately, it's too far in life for them for that to have happened. So, do you believe that once a lion has uh, been in a domestic environment, 
it's impossible for them to be reintegrated into the wild? Um, yeah. You do? I think so for a lion, yeah. I think it is pretty much impossible. They don't know how to hunt them. If I put a sheep in there, a live sheep or a live chicken, they don't really know how to kill it. Yeah, that's everybody's biggest thing, release them into the wild. You cannot just do, it just isn't possible to do that. This whole conversation is so interesting because I know some people, they'll be repulsed by the whole setup. They'll totally disagree with the idea of them being in such a confined space. But Reese does have, arguably, a valid point. You know, experts do accept that some lions do starve in the wild, but is that a good enough reason to keep them in a cage next to the M1. Ah, oh, Boomer, no you, handsome boy. I'm spending the weekend with Reese and his private collection of exotic animals. Ever since he brought two African lions to share the family home, Reese and his girlfriend, Annie, have had to pour a lot of their lives into caring for the animals. Although Reese is confident he's doing the right thing, I wonder if it ever puts a strain on their relationship. You were prepping the horses whilst I was watching Reese feed the lions. I mean, this is just a standard day for you now, Annie. Yeah, it's just the norm, really. It's become just the usual. Are there moments where you can't quite believe where you found yourself? When you stand back and look at it and see them, it, it is strange and it is unusual. But yeah, it's just become everyday norm. And even for my parents, it's just become an, a usual thing. And they were kind of the biggest ones we had to overcome at first. Like everybody, they assume that they're just kept in a garden with a picket fence. They don't realise the security measured and everything that we've got here. Some people will argue these, these creatures are used to occupying territories that are hundreds of square kilometres. This is totally inadequate. Have you ever personally wrestled with the idea? When Reese first mentioned that he was bringing them back, I was totally on the other side saying, actually, these should be in the wild or they should be in a zoo or whatever. What changed for you? When they came and I realised the story of why they were here, then it was of our priority to make sure they do get treated well. They are happy and they are well looked after and I hope you can see that we do love them a lot. But then I know outsiders will say, but you benefit way more than the animal. Is it selfish to keep them here because you love them so much? Do you think we benefit hugely? Because it, we could live in a nice house, the two of us, with Wilf, the little dog. In our eyes, the main reason why they're here isn't because we love them and we want them to be here. We believe that it is their best interest for them to be here. Mm. This sounds all consuming. It is, and it is our lifestyle now. Do you think you've always lived like this? As long as I'm with Reese, there's no other option, is there? Because they're not going anywhere, so it's either me or the cat. <laughs> when I first said to Reese that I was getting the tiny little cockapoo that I have and that he was going to be living in the house. No, no chance, no chance. So just hang on a minute, because I deal with two lions, a puma, the 20 monkeys and 18 horses. So if I want a little dog, you can bloody it's well happening. agree with it. The outside world has taken an interest too. Since he moved his wild animals into the sleepy village, Reese has endured a barrage of negative press attention. This is yours, Reese. OK, perfect, yeah. I'm curious to hear how the family feel about being pushed into the spotlight. How do you guys feel about the fact that Reese is now, like, often making headlines. Well, somebody told me a long time ago when I had my fortune told that he'd be famous, and obviously yeah, they were right. 
for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're recognisable now. Do you like that? Do you not like that? It's not great for me. It's always bad because it tells a great story when you do it like that. People read it when it's something bad. How do you feel, Annie, when you read negative things? Because when people write shit about me, the people that love me feel angrier than I do. Do you feel protective? The haters are always going to hate. And if you let it get to you and you get into this massive kind of depression of thinking, oh yeah, they're right, and reading everything. It's best not to read it. So you don't pay too much attention, Reese. Well, we did at first, but we don't anymore, do we? No, I don't. I think probably the worst thing, that thing, is they say that so, egoistic sort of type of person, that's what the kind Egotistical. of... Egotistical. Yeah. Like you want to be perceived as this crazy playboy. Yeah. I mean, if I wanted to go down the Tiger King route and be a complete lunatic, I could probably earn more money for, for doing it, do you know what I mean? But I, it's not the kind of look I want to go from. I have my, my own businesses and stuff that make money. It's not that I'm doing it for money. Mm -hmm. Definitely not doing it for money, that's for sure. I think for Reese, it's about not letting other people win. Reese is going to do whatever he wants, regardless of what Annie thinks, Mum thinks, Dad thinks, Todd thinks. He is very strong minded, very strong willed. I'll do it, mate. I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, get this on camera. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm like a waiter. I'm like a waiter. Man of this every time. <laughs> Whilst he says, oh, I don't care what people say, he clearly wants to show the wider public who he is and how the lines are kept and show some of the people that criticise him that it's not warranted. Hello? What are you doing? You've got to think there would be villagers who have small children walking up and down that stretch of land. And they're thinking, well, I know that there's a puma and two lions, literally within walking distance. I think it's sort of fair enough that some parents would feel iffy about them being there. While staying with Reese, I've got a sense of how much of an appetite there is for news stories about the risks of keeping wild animals. This morning is no exception. Every morning when I wake up, I just check the news and you couldn't script it. There's this article 14 hours ago from Indonesia. There were these two tigers. Torrential rain meant that they were able to escape, killed the zookeeper. But you, you hear so many accounts like this. And it's so, it's so clear to me that it's going to happen because they are wild animals. Anyway, can't wait for today. Morning. 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 Are you all right? Um, Reese, did you see the news this morning? No, what is it? Indonesian zookeeper. I think there was like torrential rain. It meant that two tigers could escape. Tiger killed the zookeeper. But okay. then they tranquilized one of them and shot the other dead, the tiger. Sad, isn't it? Hmm? You don't ever worry about stuff like that. What, going out and killing someone? Killing you. Get hit by a bus, can't you? You've got more chance. Do you know how much the insurance is a year for? To own two lions and a puma? For five million cover of damages. 20 grand? 150 quid a year. That's how low risk it is. One of the terms on Reese's wild and dangerous animal license is that he must demonstrate that he keeps his big cats from endangering members of the public by not allowing them to escape. Oh, he's, he's coming, look. 
how agile it is. Oh, nice. oh, look, 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 look. This is when you, you realise how like ferocious they are. But even though Reese has complex security measures in place, things can go wrong. In 2020, it was reported in the news that Reese's Puma Rogue had attacked a former member of his staff after she entered the enclosure. Oh, oh mate. Just, yeah, just, Sorry. Just, Sorry. He even likes you anyway. Hello, Rogue. So you don't you don't fear rogue at all? From this side of the fence, no. Do you get in the cage? No. You do? We do it when we need to do it. It's not something I go in there and start cuddling him. But it's well documented. There was a situation involving rogue. There was somebody, an individual, working for you, who let herself into the cage. The cat didn't escape. She let herself into the cage and there was an altercation. What happened? So to be honest with you, I don't really want to go into it. If you read newspapers and you read the newspapers that have printed this stuff, they're not reliable. And that's really all I'm going to have to say on the matter. How, mu how much are you happy to say, Annie? I think Reese has said... You don't really know much about it. You haven't really had much... Um, Do you think this is your right to reply? Uh, is, I mean, that, that's all I'm going to say because I think it's not fair on all parties, really. And when you become in the limelight for something, you are literally harassed by newspapers. You don't realise what the impact that they have on our lives. It really, really put so much pressure on me. And I, could, I, I actually nearly broke from it. Do you accept that whatever happens here, ultimately, you're responsible. It's your responsibility to keep people and animals safe. Yes, it is my responsibility, and that is something we are really serious about. That situation would never would never happen again because this the security in the system here is absolutely watertight. You can see the signs. The signs are here: no access un, unless trained and authorised. It's there. Do not put your fingers through the mesh. You cannot get through one door without the other door behind you closing. When the door opens, you heard yourself. The alarms go off. When the doors open, they text you. So I'm doing it for the public as well, to keep everyone safe, but also for my cats, which is the main concern to me because I want them to be safe. And the last thing I ever want them to do is to escape. Did it make your relationship with the villagers even more fraught? Did some of the villagers say, well, this is what we're worried about? No, because I think um, in general that it's newspapers. Haters are always gonna hate. They're always gonna hate and I don't take any notice. You know, today was definitely the most awkward day. Uber defensive, very kind of unwilling to go there. And I, th I think when the news broke, he was hounded by journalists. I think he had a pretty hellish couple of weeks, but you know, he has to be held to account that his cats I'm not privy to all the conversations that go on here. I can only ask the questions and, you know, he can tell me what he wants to tell me. Jesus, it's getting cold now. Oh, I think it's going to snow tonight. Yeah, I think it is. While I've been staying with Reese, the size of the lion enclosures has been causing me some concern. His wild cats don't seem to have much space to roam when I think of the huge territories that they have in the wild. As it stands now, how big is the lion space? Um, the lion space is around about uh, 350 square metres. Legally, what's the minimum requirement? 37 square metres. At the moment, it's 10 times the, the minimum. That's really interesting because to me, as an outsider looking on, this feels very confined. This feels small. Yes, I have plans to make it bigger already in place. So I'm going to go literally to the top of this field here. So right to the gate? Right to the gate, yeah. And then all the way down 
the field and past the stables, which is really big. That's bigger than some zoos, definitely. I'm just trying to think of it from the villagers' perspective. This house here, do you know who lives there? Yeah, I know him, yeah. Do they worry about the lions potentially being even closer to their family home? Um, I think they've probably got concerns, but you know, like I said to all of the neighbours, um, you're welcome to come round, we can discuss, I can try and work with you. Have you put planning permission in? Yeah. What's your relationship with the local authorities like? We've got a really good relationship with the council. Uh, I suspect that there are some councillors yeah. who perhaps oppose this. There was one in particular, he's not a very fair person and he doesn't really do a lot for this village so I'm going to stand as a councillor for the counties and the borough councillor and I'm going to try and improve this area. Obviously people are going to compare you to Joe Exotic now. You know what, you know what happened with him? Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. What parallels? I'm trying to think how I would feel if I lived there. I really don't know whether or not I would mind. It'll be next to worse things. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> when do we find out whether or not you get the green light? I think it'll be like middle of March. OK, OK. I mean, yeah, they would have so much more space. Yeah. Wouldn't they? I think I've been quite honest with them. That space feels very very small to me and whilst you can disagree with a lot of what he is about you have to give credit where it's due he wants to give them as much space as possible uh, but it's also worth bearing in mind you, you can have all of the ticks and you know this can be legal on paper but that doesn't mean morally it's it's right Thank you, I'm really grateful. Care for the plate at home. Oh, thank you. It's my final meal with the Olivers. And they've brought me to their home from home. So this is the family pub? Yeah. We all muck in together really, don't we? Yeah. We just take all the money. My dad repairs the toilets. Sounds like a good plan to me, Todd. Yeah. My dad repairs the toilets. <laughs> is that Gary's shiny that green? Toilet, man. Gary, you're taking a notice of Bree. Yeah. drinks the talent. Well, I drink the wine. Todd's the cocktail the... maker. Yeah? Yeah. And um, I bring the birds in. I bring the birds in. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you for, for having me over. I know it took a while and you were sort of a and ah and back and forth, and I yeah. get that. What did you feel like before you came on like us and what we do and and be be honest no, with it totally. what was your opinion on everything we did Feel like keeping wild animals in a small cage is quite cruel like I, but you think they could be better elsewhere I I would like to see them have just more space which is what we're hoping yeah. with this planning permission going through we're hoping that that can be possible and that's what Reese was saying and he was saying, you know, if we go right back and down to the sides, that would be bigger than some zoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I think... 100%. And then I think that's harder to argue. Mm. I'm really good at this, actually. What are you doing? Oh, you're going to... Oh, you oh. love your tree. He's cheating already. He's cheating already. Oh. Reese is such an interesting character. I think I was expecting a, a bit of a narcissist. I think I was expecting a kind of loud, playboy, kind of flashy character. And I, I don't think he's like that. I think he's, he's more likeable than I'd anticipated. What do you think your brother would be good at? People's a counsellor. Good at busting people around already. Necessary, you need to be able to delegate. Yeah. Uh, he'd be good at that. Um, and he's passionate about things, so it'd be good. Have you decided on your picture, your photo? No, I need to do that actually this weekend. You need like a smart suit, and you know they sort of they have their body at that angle. But we're going to be different. That's what oh, we're Oh, yeah, saying. no, that's true. So it's a bit more so informal. Just like get a lion in the background or something. Let's not. <laughs> <Okay>. Let's not. <laughs> 
The fact that Reese has got, you know, two lions and a puma, it has brought so much attention and so much stress to, to this family. I do wonder, like, is it is it worth it? I just want a quiet life. But I don't think Reese he's that way inclined. I think he's always been. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. <laughs> <laughs> pleasantly surprised in terms of how respectful they've been towards me, even though they know what I make of their setup. What are we playing next, Twister? <laughs>